Welcome back to Deal Unboxing. Today we're going to review Volt's first Wi-Fi 6E router in the market. This router is from ASUS and it is called Rogue Rapture DT AXC 11000. So in this in-depth review, we will do a Wi-Fi speed, coverage and performance test and see how ASUS Wi-Fi 6E router performs. And is it either worth upgrading from existing Wi-Fi 6 routers in the market? Let's find out. So please sit back, relax, enjoy the review. Also, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for notifications for the future videos. Let's first do a quick unboxing and see its contents. The unit comes with quick start guides, warranty card, Wi-Fi 6E router, power adapter, and an ethernet cable. Let's look at the specs. The Wi-Fi 6E router is powered by 64-bit quad-core CPU running at 1.8 GHz, 256 MB flash, 1 GB RAM. It supports AXE 11000 tri-band Wi-Fi 6E standard with 2.4 GHz, 1.5 GHz, and new 6 GHz band, OFDMA, BSS coloring, beam forming, MU-MIMO, 1024QAM, 8 external antennas, WPA3, and 160MHz channel support for both 5GHz and 6GHz bands. In the connection options, router has 4 1GB LAN ports, 2.5GB WAN port for internet or LAN, and 1GB WAN port as well. There are also two USB 3.2 Type-A ports on the side, and there are three buttons on the front, which allows you to toggle Wi-Fi connection on and off, and connect devices via VPS, and a boost button. Let's talk about design and features. The ASUS Wi-Fi 6E router has a spider-like design, but overall solid construction. It has eight external antennas and you can remove them, but overall body dimensions are big, measuring 10.4 times 10.4 times 2.9 inches and weighs 3.94 pounds. The router cannot be wall mounted and there's a lot of ventilation on the top and bottom to keep the powerful hardware temperature under control. The ASUS Wi-Fi 6E router is configured for maximum performance and coverage up to 2500 square feet. It is a tri-band Wi-Fi 6E router with total networking speed of 11,000 megabits per second, out of which 1148 megabits per second on 2.4 GHz and 4804 megabits per second on 5 GHz band and 4804 megabits per second on a new 6 GHz band. Now let's do some performance, coverage and speed test. So we place the ASUS Wi-Fi 6E router in the basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it and it is in the lowest part of the house. For this test, we are using Intel's latest AX210 Wi-Fi 6E card installed in our laptop, an iPhone 11, which also supports Wi-Fi 6. The Intel AX210 Wi-Fi 6E card is the only Wi-Fi card in the market that is supposed to support Wi-Fi 6E router out of the box. But during our experience at this time of the review, unfortunately, that is not the case. So at the time of this review, following is the only method that would allow you to use AX210 Wi-Fi 6E card to work with Wi-Fi 6E router in Windows 10. I will also post this information in the description and also I will post it on Deal Unboxing website. So following are the steps. Make sure you're running Windows 10 version 2004 aka May 2020 update or higher. Install the latest Intel AX210 drivers from the website. Then run the following command in the command window to confirm the OWE is supported and confirm latest drivers are installed. Then you have to make the registry changes to enable 6 GHz for AX210 wireless card because out of the box AX210 could not see 6 GHz channel from ASUS router. I will leave all the information in the description below so you can follow the steps. According to Intel, the latest drivers that will support and enable 6 GHz band out of the box will be available later this year. So let's get back to the test. So the total square footage of the house is 5000 square feet. I will be testing Wi-Fi connection in different corners and floor of the house to see how well ASUS Wi-Fi 6E router performs in terms of Wi-Fi speed and coverage. In this test, we will use iPerf3 performance test. So if you're not familiar with iPerf3, it is a tool to measure maximum bandwidth on the wireless or wired networks. So here, as you can see on the screen, we have all three Wi-Fi bands set up separately. Also, we will only be using 6 GHz and 5 GHz channel for best performance results. Both 6 GHz and 5 GHz band is set to 160 MHz bandwidth. And you have the option to either select your channels or leave it to auto. So let's get started. I have one gig Verizon Fios connection. And for the first test, I've connected a MacBook Pro to the router via Ethernet cable, and we're getting close to 1 gig internet speed, confirming router can handle 1 gig internet speed without any problem. Now for the first Wi-Fi speed test, I've played the laptop with Wi-Fi 6E card installed right next to the router, and as you can see, we are connected to 6 GHz channel with speed up to 2.4 gigabits per second, confirming 160 MHz channel is working correctly for both 6 GHz and 5 GHz bands. First, we ran the iPerf3 test using 6 GHz on the laptop, and we used 5 stream configuration instead of single stream. With iPerf3 5 streams, we were able to get max speed up, up to 910 megabits per second. 
Then we ran the iPerf 3 test using 5 GHz band on the same laptop. And again, using 5 streams, we were able to achieve max speed up to 916 megabits per second. Outstanding results, best we have seen so far. It is a promising start. Now we're going to run iProf 3 test on iPhone 11 as well using 5 GHz channel since there is no phone or mobile device in the market that supports Wi-Fi 6E standard at this time. So we used 5 stream configure on iProf 3 instead of single stream. With iProf 3 5 streams, we were able to get max speed up 263 megabits per second. We ran test multiple times to confirm and for some reason, we could not get better results, which is kind of disappointing and extremely low from our experience. Now for the second test, I'm standing 30 feet away from the Wi-Fi 6E router in the basement with a couple of walls between the Wi-Fi router, iPhone and laptop. I have so far good Wi-Fi connection. First using iPhone 11 with 5 GHz channel and configuring iProf 3 with 5 streams, we were able to achieve 265 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Again, disappointing results as compared against our previous benchmark results. Now let's move to the laptop with Wi-Fi 6E card. And here we are connected a very good wireless connection speed for both 6 GHz and 5 GHz channels. First using 6 GHz band with iPerf 3 configured to 5 streams, we were able to achieve 219 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Switching to 5 GHz band at the same location and running iProf 3 with 5 streams, we were able to achieve 540 megabits per second. So comparing our second test results against our previous benchmarks, things are not looking good and router performance is falling in the mid to lower part of the pack. Now let's move from the basement to the main floor of the house and do a third Wi-Fi speed and connection test. Here I still have good Wi-Fi signals, solid connection for both laptop and iPhone. First using laptop with 6 GHz band and iProf 3 with 5 streams, we were able to achieve 107 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. And switching to 5 GHz on the laptop and using iProf 3 5 streams, we were able to achieve 453 megabits per second. Now switching to iPhone at the same location and using 5 GHz band with iProf 3 5 streams, we were able to achieve 249 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Again, these results are not looking good compared against the Wi-Fi 6 routers. Now move to the far left side of the house and close to 60 feet from the Wi-Fi 6E router with a floor and few walls between router, iPhone and laptop. This is the toughest spot in the house as we have seen in our previous results. And the first thing we have noticed is that we are no longer able to connect to 6 GHz band at this location. But 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz bands have a decent Wi-Fi signals here. So first using laptop with 5 GHz band and iProf 3 5 streams, we were able to achieve 81 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then switching to iPhone 11 at the same location with 5 GHz band and iProf 3 5 streams, we were able to achieve 168 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. So comparing against our previous results, we are in the mid to low part of the pack. Now let's move to the far right side of the house and close to 30 feet from the Wi-Fi 6E router with the floor and few walls between router, iPhone and laptop. Here now we have good Wi-Fi signals for all three bands, for both iPhone and laptop. First using iPhone 11 with 5 GHz band and iProf 3 5 streams, we were able to achieve 260 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then switching to laptop with 6 GHz band and using iProf 3, we were able to achieve 65 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then at the same location switching to 5 GHz on the laptop and using iProf 3 test, we were able to achieve 318 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. And looking at our chart, we can clearly see the Wi-Fi 6E router has fallen to the low end of the pack, which is very disappointing. Now let's move to the second floor of the house. Here we have two floors, few walls between Wi-Fi 6E router, iPhone and laptop. Here we have good Wi-Fi signals for both iPhone and laptop with all three wireless bands. First using iPhone 11 with 5 GHz band and iProf 3 5 streams, we were able to achieve 250 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then switching to laptop at the same location with 6 GHz band and using iProf 3 5 streams, we were able to achieve 296 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Then switching to 5 GHz on the laptop and using iProf 3, we were able to achieve 648 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. And looking at our chart from this location, we can clearly see that Wi-Fi 6E router is trailing against Asus own Wi-Fi 6E routers, which is kind of disappointing. Finally, we tested the USB 3 read and write speed on the router. For that, we have configured Samba file server on the router and configured USB 3 flash drive as a shared storage. In this test, we transfer close to 5 GB file by 2.5 gigabits per second wired connection and we achieve close to 150 megabytes per second for both read and write speeds. But when we switch to 1 gig NIC, we average around 112 megabytes per second read and write speeds. So 1 gig connection was a limiting factor. Now let's talk about the router setup. Asus designed the Wi-Fi 6E router setup to be a very easy three-step process. 
All you have to do is download the ASUS router app to your Android or iOS device. Connect your router to your modem. If you have FIOS with Ethernet connection, you can connect router's WAN port directly to your Ethernet cable and you don't need modem. Then just follow the instructions and app to complete the setup or you can set up using a web browser. So if you own the ASUS router in the past, you will find the interface very familiar. The web setup has a very clean interface with ton of options to choose. So we're going to go over the settings very quickly to see what are the available options. On the main screen, we have mesh information, internet information, wireless settings with router CPU, RAM information, number of connected devices, network traffic information, network ping information and more. Then continue down the left column, there's a guest network settings, AI protection settings, allow you to set up network protection, printer controls, followed by the adaptive QoS settings, followed by the traffic analyzer setting, followed by the USB application settings, followed by the AI cloud settings. Then under advanced settings, you have wireless settings. Here you can set up wireless settings for all three bands, 2.4 gigahertz band, 5 gigahertz band, and 6 gigahertz band separately, or you can combine them into a single SSID. As you can see, both 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz channels supports 160 megahertz with DFS channels and WPA3. Here you can also set up WPS, WDS, wireless MAC filter, radius settings and more. Then you have local settings followed by the WAN settings. Router also supports Alexa and IFTTT devices. Then you have an option for IPv6, firewall, administration settings option, system logs and some network tools. But you don't have to set up all these settings if you're not a power user. You can leave everything to default or you can use the ASUS app to complete the whole process quite fast. Let's do the final summary. Overall, ASUS Rogue Rapture GT AXE 11000 Wi-Fi 6E router did not perform very well in this review. As being the flagship and most expensive ASUS router to date and priced at around $550 at the time of this review, it is not ready for prime time. The router's overall performance was disappointing compared to the current lineup of Wi-Fi 6 router in the market. The 6 GHz band has a very limited range as we expected, and I believe there's a lot of firmware progress that needs to be made to iron out all the bugs and get the most out of this expensive router. To make better worse, the current Intel AX210 Wi-Fi 6E adapter does not work on 6 GHz band out of the box, and there are no correct drivers out there unless you go through the registry modifications I mentioned earlier. But one thing for sure, when 6 GHz band works, it achieved the highest wireless bandwidth score we have seen in the close range test. So on that basis, I would recommend to wait until Wi-Fi 6E standard are finalized. And there are a lot more devices out there to benefit from 6 GHz band. And there are improved drivers and firmware available. But if you're in the market to find your next wireless router, I would recommend go with the current lineup of Wi-Fi 6 routers and save money for the future upgrades. Let me know what you guys think of Asus Rogue Rapture AX11000 Wi-Fi 6E router in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for the future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.